This recording is going to take you through um, how to calculate the skewness for a sample on um, on Excel. So I'm just using the same example that I've used over the last couple of recordings, which was um, house price data. Okay, so what I have is, um, let's see, we calculated our variance and our standard deviation last time, and now we're going to look at calculating the skewness. And the first thing we do, as always, is when we're analyzing data and generating descriptive stats like mean, median, mode, all the rest, is we have a quick look at our data, we eyeball it and see what it looks like. So this house prices in County X, we have um, a fairly, well we can see there from the diagram, from the graph, that we have um, a fairly bottom heavy distribution of house prices. We have a lot of house prices in the low um, the low price category, so 150, 199, 13 of them. We have uh, 12 of them between 200,000 uh, and 249, and we have, what's that, 15 there between 250 and 299. The high outliers then are much lower at uh, five apiece. So eyeballing it, we look like, or it looks like um, a distribution, a positive distribution with a long uh, tail to the right. So we'll, ha we'll have to see what kind of skewness we calculate, but it's probably going to be... Um, a positive value okay we can't determine the magnitude of the value we can't compare the magnitude to something else um, as in not like for like so house prices compared to rental or house prices compared to ratings on some website for example but what we can compare is we can compare like for like but what we're looking at really now is is it a positive or an, is, is it a negative value for skewness so is the number that we calculate that we quantify is it going to confirm or conform to what we um, are seeing here in our eyeballing of the data that it is positively skewed a lot of observations concentrated here in the lower uh, price category the lower end of the distribution to the left as such of the distribution so last week we calculated the the average and the variance and the standard deviation now we're going to calculate the skewness so we need x minus x bar um, to the power of three, first of all, it's the third moment, Pearson's co uh, coefficient of skewness of the third moment. So we have x minus x bar to the power of three. Now we have this calculated already. So we go above the six, uh, three to the power of three. The numbers are quite large because your midpoint um, in your observations are quite large here. So the numbers here will be actually be quite large. And we leave it as is at the moment, though we don't need to expand the categories or anything like that for the moment. Now x minus x bar to the power of 3 that's fine but what we need to take into account just like we did for the variance just like we did uh, for the mean and the standard deviations so to speak is that we need to take into account the fact that some of these categories are weighted more heavily than others. Okay so we need to multiply this value here by f. So we have f by x minus x bar uh, to the power of 3. Okay so we have our frequency there's 13 houses in that, um, in that d d distribution and we will just click and drag down we will sum and we have our sum of x sum of f by x minus x bar to the power of three three we need to divide that by standard deviation cubed so we will calculate that skewness so we have equals that divided by, now we'll open the bracket here because we're going to put in that to the power of 3 comes a bracket. Now the notation has carried forward so we will just uh, move that change to normal. We will change to, I think two decimal places would be sufficient. So when we do have a positive value for skewness, so we have a value that indicates yes the, even if you don't see the graph, if you never see the graph as a researcher, maybe you're not producing the graph, the reader will know that the values are concentrated in the lower end of the scale, even if they don't see any of this. If all they see is the, the mean and the median mode, for example, um, and the skewness, they'll know that the values are concentrated in the lower end of the distribution because of the positive value for skewness. So um, we might do another example. I'll just take the same um, values here. So this is our categories and our midpoint which of course is uh, x and also we we'll have a look at different frequencies so if we maybe look at something like 4, 3, say 9 say we have 16 houses here, say we have 8 houses here, okay so say I've generated the data 
I've looked at the raw data, I've put in my count ifs and so on, and I've seen that this is how the data spread out. And we'll have a look at what we can generate from that. So we're going to have a look first of all at the mean. So we have the midpoint minus the frequency, uh, multiply by the frequency. So we have the sum of fx over n. So how many houses do we have there? Okay, 40 houses in that county. And the sum of fx is this, and our mean, our average, is equal to, uh, no, that's for our group data, is equal to the sum of fx divided by n. Okay, so 301,000, let's put it in euro. So 301,250. Okay, as opposed to we saw 252,000 here um, earlier on. Now we'll actually graph it as well. So we bring in, so how I'm doing this is I'm just highlighting that, then I'm pressing control and holding down the right hand side button on the mouse and to capture the frequency as well. And I will go insert, column. Here's my basic graph. Um, this button here will give me some additional features on the graphing. So we'll say we want to put in a chart title. Um, we'll call it house price uh, prices in county, uh, let's say Y. So the pricing or the price categories or bands. And we'll say frequency, so the number in each. Now, I'm going to um, merge these columns here just to indicate that there's no gap between, theoretically, no gap in this continuous data. So it's not um, discrete, it's continuous. You're looking at 199,999 up to 200,000, theoretically, no gap between them. So I go format data series and just reduce the gap to 0%. Okay. So this looks very different to our original chart. This is our original county, uh, county X house prices. Now in county Y, we have um, a concentration up here in the upper end of the distribution. Okay, so it looks like um, most of the house prices are up here in the higher end of scale. Of course, we can see that from the frequency distribution anyway. So I'll just um, move the chart to a new sheet in chart 2. Okay, so I have chart 1. And I have chart 2. So this is uh, county X and this is county Y. Quite a different distribution. So I'm going to just generate um, and people were asking me how do I compare or what do I, what do I have to say about the two counties. So I'm going to generate um, so X minus X bar I should say. X minus X bar. I'm going to generate some figures here. So we have F, uh, sorry we have X which is the midpoint minus X bar which is the mean. Now, we will just move the format, change the format, and click on normal, it just removes any formatting that might have been previously, uh, might previously have been used, like the euro sign here. So, now, if I drag those values down, they will be incorrect because they will um, bring in, because I've clicked on this one here, it's the first one up here, it moves down each cell as I move down the rows, moves down the row. So what I do there, is I put a dollar before the say the J and dollar after and click and drag. Now again I'll just remove the formatting. So X minus X bar. Now what I need is X minus X bar squared. So I have X minus X bar uh, squared. So I have that squared and again I'm just going to click and drag. Okay, now I need to take into account the fact that there are um, various weightings, x minus x bar squared. So I will multiply x minus x bar by the frequency, so fairly low levels there in um, the lower end of the scale, but higher up here, which, you know, if we saw positive there, I think we're going to see negative skewness here. So We'll have a look at the standard deviation first. We're going to sum that column. We will calculate uh, the variance first. So we have equals sum of f by x minus x bar squared divided by the number of observations minus 1. So divided by 39. And that's our variance. Our standard deviation then is equal to the square root of that value. So equal square root, open bracket and close that so we have the 
the variance and the standard variance there. Sorry, the variance is this value here, the standard deviation, 59,901, because it is in that format, the format of euros. So if we think about it, uh, how would we interpret that? 68% of the house prices, I'll move it over here. Um, so E minus one standard deviation and mean plus one standard deviation. So 68% of the houses lie between 241,000 and 361,000. Okay, obviously above here, now first in county X, so mean minus um, one standard deviation, and we have mean plus one standard deviation. So 68% thereabouts of the houses lie between 188,700 and 350, just over 315,000. Okay, so that's our standard deviation. Here's more condensed around the mean. Here's a little bit more spread out. Um, okay, we'll have a look at the skewness. I think it's going to be, a, still think it's going to be um, a negative value. So we have x minus x bar to the power of 3. So we have x minus x bar calculated already to the power of 3. Yeah, the, the values are very big because you have very large uh, midpoints. We don't need to sum that because it doesn't take into account the frequency. It's not relevant to us, only for in terms of this calculation. x bar to the power of 3. So we have f by x minus x bar to the power of 3. So we have equals f multiplied by x minus x bar to the power of 3. And we will sum up those because we need the sum of f by x minus x bar to the power of 3. So our skewness then is equal to this value divided by, we'll open bracket here because we're going to do some work on the standard deviation, standard deviation to the power of 3, close bracket. Okay, so we'll remove that formatting and we will actually change to, I think, two decimal places again. So our skewness value here is uh, negative as expected, um, the opposite to county A. So you see that the skewness value is 20, minus 28.47, so it's negatively skewed, long tail to the left, indicating that most values are concentrated or situated in the right side of the distribution, meaning that when you compare the two counties, you can see that this one is negatively skewed, the other one is positively skewed. You might find that both of your counties are negatively skewed, but which one is more negatively skewed is one more highly situated in the right side of the distribution, and so on. You might find that you can discuss that. When discussing the differences between your counties, you can talk about the differences in the means. You can talk when you've calculated the mean and the mode, the differences in those. You can talk about the differences in the standard deviation. In county X here, there's a wider spread, a wider standard deviation, and indicated by the greater distribution around the mean there, 68% of, of, of houses. You can also talk about the difference in the skewness, that this one is positively skewed, this one is negatively skewed. You might find that they're both positively or both negatively skewed. Which one is skewed to the greater extent? Which one is, uh, which one has longer tail, so to speak? Which one is more situated? Which uh, county has more house prices situated in the upper end of the distribution? Or further up in the distribution, higher in the distribution, so to speak? Okay, so you can discuss all that when you're discussing the findings of your county. Thanks very much.